Hey guys, Rarocopter here with another episode of Daisy Survival. Today we're going to take it back to the basics. Um, I've had quite a few requests from people that are just now buying the game or about to buy the game. And they're really just looking for a tutorial that's going to help them out within the first you know, couple minutes of booting up and stuff. So uh, if you have not already installed the game, uh, I will put the installation tutorial as well as a written tutorial in the comments. Um, so do that first. This is going to be on first boot up. Uh, some of the things to expect. Uh, some of the things we're going to cover is server filtering, some expectations of the servers, the user interface, some basic controls, and some spawn points, and take a look at just the map in general. Um, and like I said, if, uh, if you're looking for some more advanced topics, you might want to check out some of the other uh, episodes in the series, uh, as well as the Let's Plays. There's some really good content in there that'll just kind of help you understand some of the basics as well. So let's start off by talking about the filtering in this game. Firstly, uh, if you are using the official 6 launcher and updater, which you can find on the official DAISY website, you can actually browse for servers inside of that application, but it's a little confusing and convoluted, and uh, it's not, like if you're trying to, to get into a specific server that say your friend is in, uh, the chances are if there's like one slot available or something that it'll fill up quicker than it'll take to launch the game and then load into that particular server. So I actually still recommend that you use the in-game browser. Uh, and by filtering, that's really going to help uh, speed up your search for the servers that you want to join. Um, okay, so the first thing you're going to do is when you log into the game, and you're going to click on multiplayer here. And that's going to bring up the server list for the game. Uh, however, whenever you browse the game without adding any filters, it actually shows the game information on all Arma 2 mods, and the list is pretty long. Uh, so what we're going to do is add a couple of filters to reduce the size of that, find more specific servers that we're looking for. So if you go to the bottom here and you click on filter, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is under the mission here, we're going to just type DayZ. And, uh, that's going to limit to only games that are running the DayZ code. So uh, that's already going to reduce the list quite a bit because there's hundreds of mods for this game. Uh, secondly, uh, I really do recommend that you know what version you're running. Uh, for example, right now I know that I am running 1.7.1.5. And what this is going to do is if you filter by a certain host, uh, this is uh, a textual search through all the server names. And so it'll only populate servers that have 1.7.1.5 in the title. And all the servers, I believe, are actually required to put uh, certain information in the title, and the version is definitely one of them. So that's a, a good little tip there. If you are looking for, say, a friend that's in a server, what I would do is get him to press I and in that screen it'll tell him exactly what the name of the server is and so say if he was in a Dallas server then you can just type in Dallas here and that'll only bring up Dallas servers etc etc um, so like, let's go go ahead and type in the current version and that will only bring up that those particular servers that we're looking for you can also uh, once you've got your filters plugged in you can also search or uh, actually sort on the, all these parameters up the top here. Um, the most common ones that I use are ping and host. So you can actually get an alphabetical uh, listing of all the servers. It's kind of not as helpful because almost all the servers have this DayZ zombie RPG in front, but at least it'll still search on this first uh, first letter in the server name. So now that we have that done, uh, that's pretty much all there is to filtering, but a lot of people don't really know to do that right off the bat, so I just thought I would mention it. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is server expectations. Uh, I just want to go over this real quick and, and kind of stress that this game is in alpha and it's extremely unstable, and there's just a ridiculously large player base, and it can be really, really frustrating sometimes. Um, and I just want to say that I feel your pain, and I've spent upwards of a couple hours searching for the right server and just trying to get into the game, especially whenever I'm trying to play with friends or uh, subscribers and that kind of thing. It just, it's, it's really difficult sometimes, 
and uh, between servers airing out, lagging really bad, waiting for players to disconnect, uh, this actually might be the hardest part of the game. <laughs> so uh, just be patient, and you'll definitely get in eventually, and it's definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, just, just be patient. Um, also, all these new patches are really, really focusing on performance and trying to fix a lot of these issues. So hopefully you'll only have a sliver of the initial frustration that I was feeling whenever I started playing. So now that we're loaded up and actually in a server, uh, you're ready to start figuring out exactly uh, how this interface works. It's a little bit confusing. First and foremost, make sure to adjust your video settings correctly. Uh, sometimes if you don't set the resolutions to a certain number, your screen will just permanently be blurry. Uh, to change that, all you have to do is hit Escape, go into Options, click on Video Options here, and to tweak around with these main settings here. There are advanced settings. Uh, there's really not a surefire way for me to tell you to fix the, that blurriness problem that can occur. Uh, what did it for me was making sure that my interface resolution and my 3D resolution were the same and turning off anti-sotropic filtering and anti-aliasing. Uh, but there, there's really no way for me to, to write a guide on that or anything. So just mess around with it until you get that figured out. Uh, once you get that done, we can start talking about the interface here. So in the very top right, you can't see it right now because I don't currently... Well, yeah, I do have something equipped. In the very top right, you can see that it lists what weapon you're using and shows how many bullets you have. And if you have more than one clip for a particular gun, like if I switch to my pistol here, it'll actually show you how many clips you have as well. So the six refers to how many clips I have, and the four refers to how many bullets I have in the clip that is currently being used. Uh, below that, we've got the debug monitor. This is uh, just a little info panel that shows you how many kills you've got, and how much health you have, uh, your temperature, etc., etc. Um, it's really useful. Make sure you take a look at all those things. Uh, right below that, we've got two symbols. Uh, the first is an ear, and it tells you exactly how loud you are as far as the zombies are concerned. And so whenever you are walking and crouching and all that, uh, just make sure you are watching that ear and keeping it as low as possible the closer you get around zombies. And below this is the eye which is how visible you are to the zombies so they go kind of hand in hand make sure you're watching both of those symbols like I said whenever you're getting around zombies it's really important if you aggro zombies uh, you either have to outrun them which means you might get more zombies or you have to shoot them which means you could aggro players um, so it's your choice at the bottom here we have uh, four icons. The top is a temperature gauge and basically whenever it starts raining your temperature goes down and you have to monitor that so by either taking shelter or building a campfire or there's also something called a heat pack that you can use to get back up to full temperature. Uh, it's still kind of in uh, its early stages that was just released a couple patches ago but uh, that's that's how it works in its current state. Uh, below that we have a water bottle. The water bottle tells you how thirsty you are and you do not have to drink until it is flashing red. So a lot of people they really are kind of OCD about their water and their food and they drink as soon as it turns orange or something but that's really just a waste of resources so just keep that in mind. Uh, below that we've got a blood drop and that refers to how much blood or health you have and the amount of blood you have is also listed in the debug monitor up at the top and the the health scale is based on a 12,000 so if you're at 6,000 that's 50% HP is basically how you can look at that uh, and below that we have uh, a fork and a knife which refers to how hungry you are so same same kind of thing as the the water bottle uh, don't you don't have to eat until you are blinking red so, something to keep in mind there. Uh, okay, and then on the left hand side here you can see the Rose Battle Eye initialization failed. That is where the chat is going to pop up. And last but not least, uh, on the 
left hand side of the screen you can see the weapon hatchet so this is your scroll menu and what you can do is scroll your mouse wheel up and down and it'll pop up a menu uh, to interact with certain items that's how you loot etc uh, etc et that's how you switch weapons um, if you don't have another weapon to equip and you have no other actions the, that menu actually won't pop up so don't be afraid if it's like not popping up and you're trying to scroll wheel and all that uh, you just have to have some sort of action for it to pop up. Now that we talked about the interface a little bit, now we can talk a little bit about some of the basic uh, controls and how to move and things like that. Uh, it's going to be a little bit similar and a little bit different than a lot of the FPS's that you might have played before. Uh, you do move around with WASD, just like you do in pretty much every game nowadays. Uh, if you want to side look, that's going to be Q and E. Uh, the different, okay, the, the most important thing, uh, aside from the actual movement keys that you need to know, are Z, X, and C. And Z, X, and C says how you move around. Z is actually going to make you go prone. Uh, X is going to make you crouch. And C is going to make you stand up straight. And whenever you're running, the amount of noise and vision that you give off to zombies is based on whether you're walking or running and which stance you're using. And those are your three stances. Uh, the way that you switch between walking and running is by holding shift. So right now I am, C, like I'm standing up straight, so I'm in the C stance, and I'm walking. And you can see that the ear is only at one. And if I let off a shift, now I'm running. Uh, I recommend that in the beginning of the game especially, that you should just always be in the X stance or the crouched stance. That's going to minimize your risk of aggroing zombies and uh, it, it'll just help you out until you really understand the distance that you can be from zombies until they aggro. If you press secondary enter, if you're on a server that allows third person, which most of them do, that's going to switch you to third person. This is kind of the preferable way to play the game because you just have a lot bigger field of view. Uh, another one is Alt. Alt allows you to free look around your character. And so if you're running, you really don't want to be looking straight ahead at all times because this is a huge open world. People could be coming from anywhere. So you want to always be making sure that you're looking left and right with Alt. Uh, another one is F. F is kind of an interesting key. F is how you... As you can see at the top there, in the top right hand corner, it switches uh, different things that I can throw. So F does not switch your weapons, it swip switches your weapon types and if you have anything in your main inventory that you can throw, such as a flare, a chem light, or uh, a grenade, a smoke grenade, those kind of things. That's how you're going to switch to those things, as long as they're in your main inventory. Uh, it's not going to switch weapons for you, like I said. The the mouse, we mouse scroll wheel menu, that's how you're going to actually switch weapons. And then the other most important thing is your backpack. And you do start with a backpack, so you should be able to do this. You can press G, and that's going to open up your inventory and allow you to manipulate all the stuff that you're carrying and that kind of stuff. The last thing I want to talk about is how to respawn once you have died. So... Uh, a lot of people get confused on this because it's just weird. Uh, so I'll demonstrate this. Just pretend that I just died. And the screen says that you are dead. You're going to do the exact same thing that I'm doing here. You're going to hit escape once. You're going to hit abort. Yes. And then it brings you to this intermediary screen. This screen is not used at all by DayZ. Uh, I, I believe this is a part of the original Arma 2 engine. And then I don't think there's a way to take it out. So from here, you're actually going to hit disconnect, and it's going to bring you to the uh, server setup selection multiplayer setup, this screen. And uh, and if you were to want to go back in, all you're going to do is press OK here, and that'll load you right back to the game. Okay, next we're going to talk a little bit about the map, just in general. Uh, so this is the map of Trenaris. This is uh, all of what you'll see in DayZ. It's about 255 square kilometers and it's huge. From one side of the map to the other it can take hours upon hours to travel. Um, it's just huge open world and it's awesome. 
Uh, but I just wanted to open this up so you guys could have a look, just get a feel of it. Uh, mainly the area that you're going to be worried about is this whole coastal area. You can spawn anywhere from Kaminka down here in the bottom left all the way up to uh, Berezino all the way up here in the north. Uh, but usually you'll spawn somewhere uh, around Cherno and Electro. And that's awesome. Cherno and Electro are two of the biggest cities in the game and it's probably the two most active areas in the game as well as far as PvP is concerned. Um, so it's fun. You can get a little bit of uh, PvP action. You can see a lot of zombies um, and really get a feel for the game and uh, see exactly what you want to do with it because there really is no objective. Um, I really recommend that you try and head to one of those cities first, which is a lot of people tell you not to do that, but uh, I kind of disagree with the whole go north immediately because I guarantee without a compass and without a good firm grasp of the game, you're just going to get lost and the game will probably be kind of boring just because you have no idea what you're doing. Um, with that said, if you're kind of the exploration type, I can see uh, that just being just as fun. So don't listen to me. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is uh, airfields. So uh, we can actually click on control towers here. And this shows the three airfields. We've got one here down south right on the coast. We've got the northwest airfield here. And we have the northeast airfield over here. Uh, mainly, I just wanted to mention that airfields are awesome because that is one of the places where you can find military loot in each of the hangars as well as the control tower. Uh, they all have chance to, chances to spawn really, really nice weapons and ammo and gear and all that. Uh, and this one right next to Belota is definitely worth looking at uh, if you're anywhere in the area. Anywhere from Kaminka all the way over to Cherno, I really recommend going over there. Uh, another reason to go over to this airfield is because of deer stands. You can also click to add deer stands on this map, which is a really awesome feature. I really like this map. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Uh, in Belota, by, South of the Belota airfield, there is uh, a little medical area that has four deer stands. And so what is a deer stand? A deer stand is a two loot spawn area for military loot and so each deer stand has two loot piles and there's uh, there's a high percentage chance of military loot so it's the same reason I, I really recommend going to the airfield uh, it's just a good chance to pick up really nice weapons in the beginning and go blow things up and as you can see there's a ton of deer stands there's deer stands everywhere so really be keep, keeping a keeping an eye on this map or any map that you're going to use and uh, be watching out if you're in the area of any deer stands because uh, it's, it's a quick and surefire way to find some nice weapons in this game. Alright, last thing real quick guys, I just wanted to give a shout out to Daisy Survival's personal website. We actually just moved it over from our old website to this newer uh, awesome platform so that we can roll out content a lot faster for you guys. So go ahead and check it out. It's www.daisysurvival.com. It's a lot of great resources, especially for you newer players uh, and the veteran players. There's just a lot of Daisy content on there, and we update it every single day with all the new stuff that we find and we add and we write. Um, so, you know, come check it out. And uh, another thing I just wanted to say, if you guys have any suggestions for tutorials, guides, let's play ideas, anything that you guys want to see, please let us know. Just get in contact with us either in the comments, uh, on the website, via email, however you want to get in contact with us. Uh, we do check that stuff, and we appreciate all the ideas that you guys have given us thus far. So, And, uh, of course, if this video was helpful to you, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and you guys have an awesome day.